Hello, welcome to another preview of one of my full length tutorials on Patreon. This is one of many dog lessons that I have available. As you can see, it's a very handsome German Shepherd. So this particular tutorial focuses on creating dynamic light and shadow in art. So I'm going to start off with the nose first. It's always either the nose or the eyes with my lessons as they are the most important area to get right. This nose, it's mainly warm based at the bottom and then it's a little bit cooler and shinier at the top. So I mixed together a combination of my dark brown, some yellows and at the top, some cold greys as well and just some purples and blues. It's important even with the smaller areas to pay close attention to any hue changes as these will help to make your work realistic and look much more interesting as well. You also want to pay attention to all of those hidden tones that you can get in fur, eyes and noses. For example, this nose, if you were to zoom in on the reference photo, it has hints of pink, yellows and that purple that I mentioned earlier. I personally find the best way to spot these in the reference photo is to ramp up the saturation and the brightness of the photograph on your desktop. So what that does is it tends to highlight any brighter colorful tones a lot more and make them much more obvious to the eye. So you can just very simply do this on your desktop by playing around with the contrast and that saturation. There's plenty of light at the top of this nose and just around the side of the nostril here. So I'm using a gray three from Stabilo 704 to pick out the warmer light. And then at the top of the nose, as you can see here, it's a little bit cooler. So I'm opting for a cold gray three from Stabilo, which is number 726. So I'm starting to mark in some of the texture that we get on the nose here. I never go straight in with a white on my dark base. I'll start to gradually lift with my medium grays through to my lighter grays and then finish off with a white as I'm doing here. So adding in some specks of white to make the nose look nice and wet. When it comes to those final highlights, I love to use the Caran d'Ache Chinese White because it is my brightest white compared to all of those other brands. This one really packs a punch. So I'm just going round and adding a few more, condensing a few more little marks just where the nose is brightest on the right. And then with a the black, what I like to do is just pick out a few areas, make them a little bit darker at the end stage and go around some of those little white circles as well, those marks to just pick them out a touch more. So a few more specks of white. And then I'm hopping up to the eye here. The eye also holds quite a lot of light, which is very normal when you have dramatic lighting in a piece of artwork. Like I do with all of my eyes, what I'm doing is leaving a gap where the highlight is and I'll leave the highlight until last just so that when I add it in, it's going to remain nice and light without any danger of being blended by other tones in the eye. So plenty of brown tones, rich brown tones in this eye. And then I'll add some blues into the highlight. So this is my cobalt blue from Faber Castell 143 and this is going to help make the eye look nice and glassy. So a little bit of a light blue as well, my light ultramarine blue from Stabilo, which is, as you can see, a lovely vibrant light blue tone, which again will just help the glassiness in the left eye there. So the other eye, it does have a lot more red to it. I'm using quite a bit of the Stabilo Burnt Sienna 670, which holds more vibrancy than the Faber Castell one. I do still use the Faber Castell Burnt Sienna one more in the fur, but the Stabilo one, as I say, it is this lovely punchy tone. So just if you need to make areas pop that little bit more with some more vibrancy, you can use the Stabilo one. So there's not as much highlight in the right eye compared to the other one but I am going to pull out a touch more white just to give him more expression. 
For the fur base, it's important to make it nice and rich and dense so that you don't have to do too much work when it comes to adding in hairs. To achieve the depth and strength in the fur, it's crucial to start off nice and dark. So what I did was take my Smink Serious Black and just mark in the darkest areas in the fur. So around the eyes, down the middle of the forehead as well. And then around that, I started to work in my dark brown tones. So the best tones I like to use for rich brown fur are the Natural Earth and Brown Earth Tones from Unison. The Natural Earth Tones are a little bit more red based, as you can see, whilst the Brown Earth Dark Brown Tones, which I'll be using around the cheeks, have more of a yellow undertone. So getting a mix into fur like this works perfectly as we do have lots of yellow hints going on. On, especially as I say in those cheeks and then we've got lots of really brown hints in the forehead so I'm slowly building these layers up I need to make sure they're nice and thick and nice and strong so like with all my tutorials there will be a full list of materials provided up front so you can get prepared there are also some subtle pink and purple hints in this rich fur, so I've used some of my fleshy dark brown tones like the Dark Flesh from Karen Dash and the Brown Earth 6 from Unison as well. So lots of layering up here, making sure the base is nice and thick. Once you've got past the first couple of base stages, you can then start to work your soft pastel layers in, in the rough direction of fur growth that you see in the photograph. That's going to start to build up texture in the fur and also just help to map out that natural fur growth in the photograph so that when it comes to adding those hair details, which I'm adding in now, it's a lot easier to know exactly where you're going. The other tip that I always give in my tutorials to get fur to look nice and strong in its tone is plenty of layers. I'm not just talking one or two layers, but more like four to five, and the pastel matte paper will hold that many layers. We really want the pigment to be as strong as it can be on the paper. And every time you blend the tones as you build your layers up, they will get a little bit muted. So keep building them and building them until you're happy with that level that you can see in the photograph. When you get to the last couple of base stages, you can then use your sponge as a tool to build up rough fur direction, which I talked through quite a lot, especially in my recent tutorial. So this will start to map in the direction for you and really begin to shape that face. So when it comes to adding details like I'm doing now it, you don't need to add quite as many in because you've already started to thicken up that fur really nicely so like with the base stages I always start with my details from dark moving into medium and lastly light to pack even more tones in there you can start using your pastel pencils about halfway through a portrait just to start to build in some rough hair details get some additional vibrant tones into the mix and then of course when you get to the final hair details a little bit later on you don't have to add quite so many in because the fur is already looking nice and thick so for fur like this i used plenty of that stabilo burnt sienna i mentioned earlier the Sanguine as well from Faber-Castell 188 and the Burnt Okra from Faber-Castell. So I'm adding a little bit of purple in as well from Stabilo. That's crucial for fur like this that has lots of fleshy tones. So for the lighter areas of fur in this portrait, I use the Natural Earth 4, the Brown Earth 3 and the Natural Earth 18 from Unison. Make sure as you go along, you do pay close attention to those areas which hold the most dramatic light. For this portrait, the most light sits on the right of the face, which is why I'm going in quite a lot with my ivory from Stabilo 105. So I've made sure I got a bit of a lighter base in so that it's easier to lift when it comes to adding in my hairs. So adding a little bit round this eye as well. For the dark area of fur, to get the basin for the shine, I'm using a lamp black from Stabilo, which is a lovely dark blue tone, which is going to help get 
the initial kind of shininess into that fur. For shine to look natural, we want to lift as much as we can with the lighter base tones and then pack some nice light hairs on top for the finishing touch. But for the areas of dark black and brown fur, we have a lot of shine you know, in the center of the forehead, which sticks up quite a lot. It's not so much flat shine. The process is slightly different for these areas. I tend to block it in solidly dark. And then as you saw just a moment ago, I added in some lamp black tone, and then I added some light gray hair details on top. The reason I do this is because the fur is longer. So the shiny hairs tend to sit a little bit more individually as opposed to being a massive sheen, which you'd get on a short hair dog. So lots of titanium white hairs in from Stabilo 100, just where that dramatic shine sits. So lots around the eye and up the center of the nose and forehead as well. And there's lots on the right hand side, that's where the brightest shine sits. So it's really coming together now. The fur is beautifully vibrant because I've spent so long on the base layers. So lots of dark hair details as well. They really help to strengthen up that depth, which is so vital for fur like this. So down the nose, it's quite dark, getting some orange hints in there. So it's a little bit more consistent with the fur around the top of the head. So some more of that lamp black around the top of the nose for some shine. There's plenty of subtle blue hints going on here. So very gradually and slowly lifting this fur. I'm also using my golden ochre light from Stabilo 692 just to make the fur a little bit more yellow in a couple of areas and then adding even more of my titanium white in to build up that shine. For the mouth fur, I started off with my smink black and then I added in some of a medium grey tone, my Payne's Grey from Faber-Castell 181, just to map in some of the lighter areas. It's not particularly bright, so I did use that darker grey tone to map in the areas and then gradually subtly lifting with some lighter colder greys like the Cold Grey 4724 from Stabilo and the Grey White from Stabilo 110 as well. So the reason I love this tutorial so much is it gives me the opportunity to take you through creating a lovely pink tongue as well. Tongues can be very daunting, so I leaped at the opportunity to film this one for you. Like with fur, you want to start off with the darkest value first. I use my Smink Normal Black, which is almost like a dark sepia. It has plenty of brown hints to it, which is perfect for a warm pink tongue. There's plenty of shadow at the top here, so I mixed in some dark pinks and purples and a little bit more black as well. My favorite dark pink is the Cape at Morton from Faber-Castell 169. I also mixed in some Stabilo Payne's Grey, which is the purple. This helped to make the skin look more natural as skin will always have purple hints here and there. The bottom half of the tongue is slightly trickier as you have light hitting the middle and then it does start to curve inwards as we have another shadow there. So instead of solidly blocking it in with pink and just adding a few tones into the mix, I broke it down at the base stage just where the light area is, the medium area and the dark areas. So white where the light hits hardest and then dark gray at the bottom and then a mid-tone pink everywhere else. I'm also paying attention to any yellows that I can see in the tongue. So right at the bottom, that will be the slight reflection of the fur surrounding the tongue. As the light is quite dramatic on this tongue, I have started off with a bright white and then I started to tint it a little bit pink just in that center there where the light hits hardest. If you want areas to show heavy light, then you do need to start off with something as bright as a white as the base tone. I also added a few greys into this tongue. Like purple, there are also cool greys in skin. So some of my cold grey three and four from Stabilo is needed. You can also add a pop of something as vibrant as a magenta from Stabilo towards the end. So in this preview, if you see a bright pencil coming into the mix, that's the magenta, which is brilliant just to give a pop of vibrancy. So this is it here, just a little bit of a tint, not too much. 
So very gradually working the tones up in the tongue. Adding some detail into the tongue is very easy. You just add a layer of lines with a white and a dark pink for those darker areas. You don't need much as tongues generally are smooth, but just enough to give it some texture. So getting some nice shine on the gums as well, that's very important. We need to make those look nice and wet and healthy. So using my smink black to block in quite a lot of that dark base there. And then working some subtle detail just where some of that light sits with a darker grey tone. Not forgetting those lovely teeth and just outlining the tongue a little bit more there. So the cheeks are exactly the same method as the forehead, although they are more yellow based. So I'm using my brown earths from Unison as opposed to too much of the natural earth from Unison. So lots of blending here. You'll see that one layer doesn't cover the paper entirely. So you do need to keep building it up until you can't see any paper and there isn't any grittiness going on in your base work. Not only do I build my base layers up with soft pastels, but I also reinforce them and strengthen them with my pastel pencil tones as well. And what that does is also get nice additional tones into the fur, which is vital for realism. So this side is super bright. That's where the light hits harder. So you've got shadow on the left of the face. So I've gone in with a slightly darker base. And then on the right here, I started with a lighter base and then I'm working plenty of these light and vibrant tones on top to begin to really, really lift it in comparison to that left-hand side. So lots of white to make it nice and bright here. I want to make it a little bit more dramatic than what we see in the photograph. I'm really hyping up the contrast between that right hand side and the left side. So that's why I've gone in a little bit brighter with my tones on that right hand side. On the left here, just beginning to work in my dark hair details. So as always with fur, I start off with the dark details first for depth, and then I begin to gradually lift from there. Because this side is quite a lot darker, I'm going in with lots and lots and lots of dark brown hair details and my Cretacolor Black as well for real density in the fur. And then just to lighten a little bit, you can use a soft pastel just to work in some very rough strokes and then begin to get even more detail in with your light yellow tones and your ivory tone as well. So mixing a little bit of Sienna in from Stabilo 685, that's a lovely light orange tone. So that's going to help get some of that yellow in on this left hand side as well. You'll see how this left side is so much darker than the right side because I used plenty more of my dark hair details as well as started off the base a little bit darker. So onto these lovely fluffy ears. Again, the same process as the rest of the face. Lots of layering of my different rich tones. Even though it's a small area, I am dividing the ear up into different sections with my base layer. So a mix of the soft pastels and lots of pastel pencils as well, just around the edge because it's a little bit more fiddly. You'll see there are heaps of tones going on in the photograph. So you've got pink in the center, orange on the right, yellow on the left, and lots of dark brown tones in as well. So I'm really, really packing them in here. Lots of my black tone as well, just to make sure this ear is nice and dark. Of course, you can see there is a shadow cast in the center of the ear. So we need lots of black mixed in for drama. So you can still be quite precise with your soft pastels, even though they are obviously a lot thicker than the pastel pencils. You just have to be a little bit lighter in pressure and try and use the sort of the tip or the edge of the soft pastel just to get a little bit more precision with it.
So as this ear is very, very dark in areas, I'm getting plenty of dark hair details in. I've also got a little bit of gray, you'll notice just on the left hand side, just above the light section. And that's because when I zoomed in on the photograph, I could see slight hints of a darker gray going on. So always paying attention to all of these different tonal changes going on in the photograph. A lot of them won't be very dramatic because you rarely get dramatic tonal changes in soft fur, but there will be plenty of hidden changes going on that you need to keep an eye out for. As I mentioned earlier, the best way of picking out your different tones, especially those unusual ones, is to hype up the saturation and the brightness in the photograph and that will start to make those really obscure tones a bit more obvious for you. As this breed of dog has really long fluffy fur, I am using a lot more hair layers than I would say with a short haired dog like a say Jack Russell or a Labrador. So you just have to be patient really and just trust the process, keep building them up, fill in any obvious gaps, just make sure that the dog looks nice and hairy. I'm also using a little bit of my lamp black from Stabilo in the ear as well, like I did on the forehead and around the nose. This just gets a nice base for the shine in. So it's a lovely dark blue tone, which makes for a really nice natural glossy finish on the fur. Using my ivory from Stabilo 105 to pick out some of those ends of the hairs, the tips of the hairs, where the light is hitting hardest. So plenty sticking outwards. So just putting those out. Also with a little bit of my Caran d'Ache Chinese white. So just getting those final highlights in place for the ear here. Picking out just a few here. You don't want to go too overboard, so make sure you add some in, then maybe go away for a little break, have a cup of tea, and then come back and just see if there needs to be any more added in. The same goes for the dark hair details as well. So hopping over to the other ear, exactly the same process. Plenty of my soft pastels to make up the base layers. This ear on the right, it has slightly longer fur, so I'm elongating my strokes ever so slightly, especially when it comes to the detailing stage. It's not so much that the hairs themselves are longer, it's just the angle that the ear is taking. It just gives the illusion that the hairs are a lot longer. I'll also be adding a couple more layers of my hairs just to make it look a little bit thicker, just particularly on the left edge, just where there's a bit of a shadow going on. So I'm always softening with my finger as I go along, especially when it comes to adding in these Creticolor hairs. They can come out a little bit gritty just because of the nature of the charcoal pastel pencil, but you can always smooth them out slightly with the tip of your finger. So always making sure I'm adding plenty of my vibrant tones in as I go along. So plenty of that burnt sienna from Stabilo, which is number 670. So like all of my tutorials in the full animal and backlog tier, my lessons are very lengthy. They're normally about six plus hours long. They're all real time and they have a voiceover as well. And up front, I always provide the materials list and outline and the reference photo as well. And you can always ask me questions if you want, just drop me a message on Patreon if you're struggling with anything, or there is a Facebook page as well, which is a lovely community. There's lots of people on there. There's about well, there's over 200 now and never be afraid to post everyone's so supportive so if you just it doesn't have to be patreon related it doesn't have to be a tutorial that you're posting if you're proud of your first commission for example or you've tried something new just post it and you can always see what people say about it they might have some advice or give you a pat on the back really the neck fur is even denser, so I'm going to use even more base layers 
to build up the fur here. So again, plenty of my vibrant, rich tones. Lots of the light ones worked on top of dark just to start to lift some of those lighter areas. And of course, using my dark soft pastels as well, just to start to shape the neck. We don't want it looking flat or boring. It has to have just as much detail as the face does. And the fur has to look just as dense, if not denser. So I'm going quite thick here with my base layers. Lots of shaping, as you can see, breaking the neck down into the dark areas, the mid-tone areas, and the light areas of highlights. So obviously a lot more light on the right-hand side with the soft pastel tones. So you don't always have to have exactly the same tones that I have to make up the tutorial. If you're unsure and you're looking at your collection and thinking, oh, I don't have that, just drop me a message and tell me what you do have in terms of the brand and I can try and match it with what's closest to what I have and what I use. There's always going to be something very similar, so never panic. You can still work on my tutorials having even a limited collection of pastels or a completely different brand to what I use. This is just a guide really, and what I find works best. Obviously I've been working with pastels for many, many years now. I know what works best for me and what works best for different subjects and different areas. So it really is just a guide. If you do want to really enhance your work and take it to the next level, then you can invest in exactly what I use or you can just continue with what you have already. So lots of dark hair details added in, my vibrant details as well, like the Burnt Sienna from Stabilo. And then as we start to get a little bit lighter, I'm moving into my lighter orange tones and yellow tones, just starting to build up, especially on the right hand side here. As I mentioned with the side of the head on the right, I am making it a little bit lighter than the photograph. I just want a bit more contrast going in. I specifically wanted to show you in this tutorial the dramatic contrast between light and shadow. So it only made sense just to hype up the light a little bit more and the darkness on the left a little bit more just to show you process a little bit more obviously. Really layering heaps and heaps of my light hairs in on the right here. So using a mixture of my light yellow tones and my white as well. And then going in with a dark black tone, my Creta Color, to pick out some of the darker hair details, which is important for depth. Obviously, when you start to get into the lighter areas of fur, you do want to space those hairs out a little bit more, those dark ones, because we don't want it to look too unnatural in the lighter areas of fur. But we can go very overboard on the left hand side of the neck here because it's a lot darker, there's a lot more shadow. So I'm starting to work quite a few long ones out here and then use my ivory to pick out some of the dramatic light that's just traveling under the tongue. And then we're starting to pull out some of the lighter fur on the left here, but not quite as dramatically as the right hand side. We do want a nice contrast there.
in the final stages of my portrait right towards the end I just go back in with another layer of a vibrant tone like a burnt okra or the burnt sienna from Stabilo or just any other orange tones and ready brown tones and begin to just get a little bit more of a last pop in of colour and then I go in with another layer of my white and ivory just to lift some areas even more. And then I'll go in with my dark hair details as well, just to make sure that density is where it needs to be. So it's just final details really. It's just making sure everything is where it should be and just adding in final details to make the fur look even hairier. It's just adding in those final little pops and final hairs just to define a few areas and make everything look nice and furry. So that is the full length tutorial available on Patreon, details in the description below for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on Patreon soon.